Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host, Richard Swan, and in today's show, I've got a namesake. We've got two Richards, the best people to know in business. We have Richard Morris from Technology Within. Good morning, Richard. How are we, sir? Very well indeed. It's nice, nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, pleasure to have you. It's going to be great talking about the company and the, the services, the products that you offer and how you can help a lot of people in quite a lot of different areas actually within the property world. We'll get to grips with that because there's, there's a lot to cover for us. Uh, but, but you, the man, the legend, Mr Morris, how did he get to this point, what was your own kind of personal background? You've got you've got quite a journey through a few different companies and mergers and all sorts of things. How how did you kind of summarise that if someone was asking about your own personal journey? Well, just just a few months ago, it was my fiftieth birthday, so um, I've, I've I've been involved in the sector for the last thirty years, which is uh, which is quite frightening. And um, you know, being involved in in the technology world for that long, you've I've certainly seen many you know many changes over over that time from. Uh, you know, starting off, you know, at school with the, the BBC microcomputer and the IBM Model 80 servers, you know, I'm showing my age, but, uh, you know, things have moved on pretty rapidly over the last uh, 30 years. Yeah, they certainly have got the BBC micro, I remember that very vividly, that's incredible. I think, I think if I mentioned that to my children, they would have no idea at all what it was, but <laughs> the Spectrum and the, uh, the Commodore 64, those are all the, the computers that we were using all those years ago. Wow, fantastic. Now, the comp- where you are now, technology within, you know, you're providing all these service, connectivity, internet. I mean, what kind of, you know, if someone was bumping into you at a networking event, you go, what, what's this, Richard? Technology within, what does it use guys do? You know, is it, is it servers and stuff? Well, actually, no. It's, I mean, how do you open up that conversation to them? Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. So, so technology within, the UK's leading provider of technology services into the flexible workspace sector. Uh, and our aim is, is very much to enhance the workspace environment for our customers and indeed their clients by providing easy to use technology. So we're, we're currently supporting about 400 different office spaces around the UK, which in turn have about 15,000 companies. So it's, um, it's a big responsibility, you know, when, uh, you know, if we don't deliver a good quality service, then ultimately, you know, we've got 15,000 different companies that, that could be affected. So, you know, it, it certainly is... Um, it's a, it's a responsibility, but we've got a great team and, um, you know, we can sleep at night. The guys do a great job. So um, it makes uh, it makes our job um, makes our job easier. Yeah, I mean, that, that responsibility, you're right, that pressure, because what you're, t- you know, today, you know, 2020, when you say something like, you know, the internet, connectivity, Wi-Fi, everything else, that is so crucial. You're not talking that the coffee machines run out of some capsules or, you know, you're just waiting on one of the new water coolers arriving that you can put up with a wee delay. This is 100% crucial to people's businesses. It is. Uh, absolutely. And, um, yeah, we, we had, on a personal note, we, a couple of years ago, we had uh, we had a delivery of, uh, of, some, ch- of, of some stone. And the, um, uh, I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're just home users, but... Um, the, this delivery uh, lorry uh, took out our internet connection at home, and and um, I thought, well, you know, we can we can cope for a few days without the internet at home. It's not, you know, but then when you think that you know we do online banking, you know, we have to order things, you know, it, it's 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 a it's a utility. You know, internet connectivity these days is is an integral part. It's as important as as um, you know as as electricity, you know, as as water. Um, we 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 did a survey a while back at a conference and. Um, we, we, it was a bit of tongue-in-cheek, but we, we were asking people, what was more important, water or Wi-Fi? And, um, you know, it, it's, it's an interesting debate, really, because clearly water is, off, you know, is clearly more important. But, you know, in, in an office environment, if your internet goes off and your Wi-Fi goes off, well, people just pack up their bags and leave. Um, whereas, let's say, if the water supply goes off, well, you know, you can, you've probably still got some water in the kettle and maybe got some bottled water so you could carry on working for a while. But... Um, yeah, look, internet is, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult, but it's, it's a hugely important utility for our business users these days yeah. and, and home users, you know, it's, it's a part of our life. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, that, that must, I mean, let's get really topical and, you know, it is 2020, as I said, you know, the COVID year, it's just been incredible. There, there has been a, a completely enforced change to how people are working. You know, so many people with offices shut down or remote working patterning, so on and so forth. And you're right, that utility has become even more crucial. Have you had to adapt or tweak things to, to support your clients in any particular ways? 
Well, we, we've, uh, as, as our own business, we, we're set up in a way that, you know, people can work from home. So we're a number of our um, employees, you know, work from home. We work from regional offices and we, we have our own head office down in Southampton. So our, our business was set up in, in a way that really wasn't impacted when, when COVID, you know, COVID hit. Um, we, you know, we've continued to deliver services in, in, in the same way. But I think it's, it's fair to say the clients that we work with, uh, you know, their, their businesses have been affected. Um, you know, we're largely providing services into the flexible workspace. A lot of our operators that we supply services into have found that their clients have just moved and started working from home, as, as the government and Boris Johnson has suggested that people do. So, um, yeah. you know, having that connectivity from a home environment um, is enable people to, to carry on working. Uh, I think I think it's interesting to say, going back to, to where we started, you know, if, if, if this had hit... Um, you know, 20 years ago or 15 years ago, we didn't have the IT infrastructure and the technology in place to enable people to continue to work like they are now. And, um, you know, again, you know, years ago, people would have a, a file server in the corner of their, of their office and all the data was stored in the file server. And occasionally there was a fax came in. And, and, and But nowadays, everything's cloud-based. You know, people have access all their data through the cloud, whether it's an account system, a CRM system, you know, it's, it's all cloud-based. So as long as you've got good connectivity, you can pretty much continue to do your job, you know, you know wherever you are. Again, I accept there are certain jobs where that's not possible, but, you know, if, if it's a normal office-based job, an admin job, a sales-related job, you know, some professional, you know, skills, architects, you know, um, surveyors and so forth that can work from home, you know, can pretty much carry on, you know, carry on as normal. Yeah, exactly. And the areas within the business, within property you covered, you really do spread yourself about because we love people listening in just now, watching in just now, who they might be the landlords that deal with a lot of commercial space and working with different customers there. We've got landlords who deal with, you know, student accommodation, and all sorts of different units within the one building. Uh, but you can actually, you can accommodate and help all of them, can't you, when you bring those services in? We can. Um, so, so initially, we'll bring in the fiber connectivity into a building, uh, and often we'll bring in two circuits. So we'll bring the primary circuit and the backup circuit. The backup circuit is there for resilience because if the primary circuit goes down for whatever reason, the JCB could dig the road up, you know, whatever. Then the secondary circuit is there. So, so that connectivity and resilience is hugely important. Um, and, and then when the connectivity comes in, we can then, in effect, carve up the bandwidth. We can give clients dedicated bandwidth, shared bandwidth. Um, and it basically, depending on it, and it's a totally flexible solution mm. in terms of enabling, you know, different, you know, clients have different requirements. Um, the student sector is quite an interesting one in, in that, um, you know, stu students can be one of the most demanding clients um, that if their internet fails, you know, they, they, students can absolutely live without water, but they can't live <laughs> without internet connectivity. You get some very grumpy students when uh, things go wrong. Yeah, and then that can lead to, to very grumpy landlords if they don't, you know, stay on top of that. And landlords at the end of the day, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with this, they just want an easy life. They want their, yeah. their tenants to be happy, you know, they want good quality connectivity and, yeah, and, and ultimately they, you know, if, if the provision of the internet, you know, again, if, if a developer is, is building a new building uh, and they have the provision of the connectivity in place, then um, it, it will enable, it gives them a much a great marketing uh, advantage because their tenants can move in straight away. Mm. Um, one of the problems with with um, with fibre is it can take two or three or four or five or six months to install. Uh, this is nobody's fault. It's just one of those things that you know takes time. Um, yeah. And uh, what we're finding the switched on landlords are, are ones that will provision the connectivity early on. So right. when you know when when the tenant wants to move in, it's readily available. They can move in straight away. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I mean, obviously the, the links, people listening in, the links are in the show notes, you know, go and follow them, connect with Richard and follow off to the Technology Within website because there's loads of great wee videos that just explain how they operate. And one of the things that you're really kind of keen on is not just we can do this and here's the technical side and here's this, but it's the human side, it's the ethos side behind it. You're, you're very much powerful on the angle of, listen, we're not stuffy you know, snooty IT people that will say, oh, just turn it off and on again. You know, you've got a real team who focus on customer service as well. Yeah, interesting though, Richard, turning things on and off does often help, but... Uh, <laughs> it does. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. right. No, it's, 
we, we, the, the culture of the business, you know, we've got a great team, a uh, great team of people. And, and the culture is, is very much whereby we generally, you know, generally care for our clients. And if things do go wrong, and they do from time to time, you know, the team is there to, to assist. And um, you're right, we don't talk in, in, in a condescending way. You know, we're just decent people. And, you know, the guys are, are there to, um, you know, there to help each other. But what, what's great is, is when individuals can overhear others talking and, and we sort of, you know, build that culture of, um, of just being a friendly, a friendly business. Yeah, exactly. Now, Tim, how did the journey unfold? What I mean by that is we've touched upon these different areas. You know, you guys can help with hospitals, with big build-to-rent projects. You've got the commercial that I spoke about, uh, student accommodation, shared working spaces, so on and so forth. Did you start in any one particular area and then you just saw it grow or did you hit the ground running with everything? How has that evolved for you? Yeah, no, it's it's a good question. Richard. So, so we, um, I mean, the business has been established for many, many years, and and um, and, and the business has sort of evolved, you know, in, in terms of what the demand. So, a, a number of years ago, we 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 had some clients in the flexible workspace sector, which is you know you know are often called serviced offices or business centres, uh, more topically now co working spaces. So, this is where you have a multi tenanted office environment, and this is really it's very much a niche. A niche sector that we that we found ourselves in, and and, and I'm certainly pleased to say now we're you know in, in the UK now with the sort of market leader in, in in that particular sector. But you're right, it, it's you know the provision of technology you know across you know the commercial office space, student accommodation, built to rent sector. The principle is the same. It's providing good quality connectivity, and it's that infrastructure that is hugely you know it's hugely important. And then from there, things like the Wi-Fi uh, is is uh, is enabled. You've got access to, um, you know, telephony services, software management systems. So the whole thing is 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 built from that initial um, initial connectivity. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned earlier about you know that the landlord looking for an easy life, he just wants to focus focus on his business, etc. Your team really excels in taking away a lot of the pain, doesn't it? Because you you provide a, a kind of framework, a support where if it's the main internet provider you need to work with, you'll focus on that. If it's kind of problems with the Wi-Fi, the setup, how they want you know it, it set up for their clients, your guys can manage that. If there's you know there's different ways they can use their phones to control things and all sorts of stuff. Was, it, was that a, a key decision? Did you, we need to take all these pain points away so that our service stands out from everyone else? Was that a, or was it just something that just fell into place? No, it was very much a strategic role that we wanted, wanted mm. to take. At the end of the day, we're, we're aware that landlords, you know, they, they do want understandably an easy life, but and and, and technology can be quite, um, you know, there's, it can be quite confusing and and. You know, it's important that we make we make it easy. So initially, there's problems, there's challenges, there's things like way leave, bringing connectivity. We will just we will deal with the the the, the challenges to start with, and and you know and provide you know at the end of the day, allowing the the, the clients and the, and the the operators and the landlords just to focus on their businesses, and then behind the scenes, the guys are, are, are you know dealing with way leave, dealing with all those challenges, in in essence, to take away that pain and make it easy. Yeah, it's music to the ears of many people, so it is. <laughs> now, if you want to pick an industry where, you know, you're going to be involved in change, it's going to be dynamic, you've got to think in your feet, you've got to grow and adapt, you picked a belter, you know, when it comes to technology and internet. This The pace of change is ridiculous, you know, from dial-up modems to fibre that we've touched upon, people are talking about, you know, 5G networks expanding, so on and so forth. You must have seen a whole range of, of growth and pains and everything else, What's been the biggest challenges uh, when you look back on the journey and, and what's been the kind of most satisfying milestones, if we call them that, for the business? Yeah, look, it's, the challenges are continually, you know, I think it's the continual change and you have to keep adapting to, to, to requirements. So, mm. again, you know, um, pe- people's demand for connectivity is forever increasing. So the, the, the use of, of cloud computing is really driving that, that demand for um, for faster you know faster and faster you know bandwidth, so um, we're continually having to upgrade, uh, continue having to to improve you know connectivity coming in um, because people's expectations are, are always it's going one way people want more and more um, so um, yeah that's that's what we're seeing that's what we're seeing happen um, yeah. I mean it, it's hugely rewarding though to, to you know when you you know when you um, you, you have a, a, a building site in effect. 
where there's nothing there. You know, there's, there's no connectivity. You know, it's a shell. And often we, we will be brought in by an architect, brought in by the landlord and say, look, this is, this is our building. And we say, whoa. And they, they want us to provide, you know, the comms cabinet through to the connectivity, you know, mapping out where the Wi-Fi access points to be, need to be located. We're putting in a, a video conferencing solution. You know, it's, it's really end to end. And then 12 months in, the project's great. You know, people are, are, and people are just seamlessly operating and it's, it's all working. And that, that's really, that's rewarding, you know, and we're lucky that we see, you know, buildings from, you know, very much a building site through to the end, the end delivery. And uh, that's, that's very rewarding. Yeah, it must be. That's, that's quite a creative thing. I love that. You can see something grow and, and come into, you know, it's, it's being manifested right in front of your eyes. It's fantastic. To, to drill into some of the, the specifics and the nature and stuff, because people might be listening and, and thinking, all right, so so it's just like an internet provider. Is that it? You know, rather than BT bringing in, I just go to these guys. Is that what you mean, Richard? But no, you, you've got so many other products, services, kind of strings to your bow. One of the things you might want to kind of touch upon and explain is the mesh system. System because one of your big offices down in Nottingham talk about this, the mesh system and how it's put into place to really spread across a gigantic area. And it, it's an amazing tool set that the, your team have put into place, isn't it? Yes, and so our mesh data product is our, you know, like our flagship, uh, flagship solution. And this is a, a product that's, that's specifically designed for the flexible workspace or multi-tenanted building environment. So what, what it does in effect, it, it provides... Uh, it does the clever part. So you, you mentioned, yes, of course, we use the likes of BT or Virgin Media to bring in the connectivity. But the mesh data product is the clever part that really, um, you know, separates the bandwidth, gives in, individual tenants in a multi-tenanted environment the bandwidth that they require. So we may have some examples where a client needs 100 meg bandwidth, other requirements may be 500 meg of bandwidth, and, and that could be carved up to suit those individual requirements. And again, in a multi-tenant environment, we need to be flexible. The operator needs to be flexible in terms of what the demands are. So that's what Mesh Data does. It also controls the, the Wi-Fi onboarding. So if people are using meeting rooms, um, you know, they, they need access to Wi-Fi. They need access to Wi-Fi throughout the entire building. So it manages and also provides the, the, the reporting, which is hugely important. Yeah. By um, the, the, an individual, you know, landlord uh, or a, a centre manager of a building can actually uh, see the the reporting from from what their individual clients are doing. So if a, if, if a, a tenant is saying our internet is running a bit slow today, there is an ability to go online and see what uh, what they're doing, and we can make some changes. And, and again, it's been flexible, it's been agile to enable to make those changes and ultimately, you know, service those clients' requirements. Yeah, exactly. I mean, data is it's a massive thing these days. And as you say, if we can get the data and then use it and they make business decisions as well, then it's something that's going to help landlords every step of the way. Yeah, it's also, also a good opportunity. If, if, a, if, a, if, a, if a tenant is finding that their, their internet is a bit slow, it may, it may not be slow, it's just that they, their allocation is, is, not, is not there. There's an upsell opportunity for the landlord to say, look, you know, Mr. Tenant, we can upgrade your internet. It may cost you a little bit more, but that's, that's fine. You know, and, and, um, you know, but again, servicing that, that uh, requirement is important. Yeah, definitely. So touched upon one of those buttons there, mesh data. Another two that pop up when you think of the company is we've got Mojo Voice, a cool sounding name, <laughs> and Twin Meet. How, how would you describe those products and services? So the, the, the voice platform is, 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 a, is a, it's a telephony solution. Um, but un, unlike a normal uh, telephone system, of course, you can make calls and you can receive calls. But the important thing in, in a multi-tenanted environment is you need to have a very, a very sophisticated billing because each individual tenant will need to be billed separately for their outbound calls. They will also need the flexibility of diverting calls um, and, and all the you know call recording and all those facilities that, that an individual you know tenant. But again, it's it's offering the flexibility that the requirements in a particular building will be all different. You know, you may have twenty different companies in the building; they will all have different requirements. Uh, and, and again. You know, that's, that is what our telephony solution does. It, it provides the flexibility and to be agile. Um, the, the Twin Meet product is a new solution that we've just launched, which is our video conferencing solution. Um, and let's face it, you know, a lot of us these days are, you know, are using video conferencing. At the moment, we're just talking on, 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 on a single camera, which is, yeah. which is perfectly acceptable. If, you, if you're wanting to have a, a room of, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 people, you know, all crowding around a simple laptop is, isn't really sufficient. So, you know, the Twin Meet product is, again, is designed for that commercial office environment. Again, easy to use solution, 
um, you know, no sophisticated, um, you know, equipment required uh, and easy and, and, you know, minimal number of cables, which in, in with COVID going on, we haven't mentioned COVID yet, but, um, you know, that's, that's, that's important to keep it simple, um, you know, and easy to use. Yeah, and th that kind of setup, working environment, so on and so forth, is that something you can see really expanding? Uh, I was, I was, I was speaking to one of the commercial uh, real estate managers recently, actually, and they're analysing, for example, a lot of the different city centres that they work in, and they are already being told by some of these major companies, we're not coming back there, and that place, we're not doing it. We're going to minimise it and cut it down to ten staff, and all these other staff they're working remotely, and we're going to take this one massive building and split it into five regional offices. Can you see that from your side as well? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is very much happening, um, and you know the the operators that we we work with, uh, as I said, four hundred different um, buildings around around the country, and you know it, it it it's fair to say I think London city centre London has been you know has been hardest hit. Um, but we are seeing, you know, the, the head office function will still, you know, will still remain an important part. But the regional office spaces, you know, will increasingly be, you know, be important. And indeed, people working from home. So I think what we're starting to see is, is a very much a hybrid working environment. As long as you've got this connectivity, you know, people will work from home, they'll work close to home. And that close to home may be in a, in a co-working space, it may be in a small surfaced office, you know, near to their working environment. And then from time to time, they will go into their head office. So it's, it's very much this hybrid working environment. We don't need to be, you know, behind the same desk, you know, five days a week. You know, I, I think that's changed, and I think that's changed forever. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, we, we're certainly seeing, um, you know, uh, and again, the regional operators that have got sort of good car parking spaces, you know, the, the less need, I hate to say it, for public transport, you know, in the, the last, you know, last few months we've had, um, those, those sort of places at the moment are doing very well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, earlier we touched upon the fact you were mentioning fantastic uh, historic pieces like fax machines. God bless them. I think I think the solicitors are still hanging on to them. <laughs> Everyone else <laughs> is trying to go away from them. So you spoke about that and, a, you know, a server inside an office, you know, and you explained how the good, the positive side of it these days is, it's great. We've got the cloud. We can break away. We're not handcuffed to this anymore. But I suppose one of the other considerations that then goes into is that, oh, wait a minute, now we've got all our data and all our traffic and things are in places like the cloud and we're, oh, wait a minute, now there's a security angle. So have you seen that? Are, are clients becoming more knowledgeable and questioning you on things like your security, encryption, making sure that you've got that covered as well? Yeah, no, absolutely. We have another solution, which is our uh, software management platform, which uh, houses a lot of data for our clients, you know, license agreements, meeting rooms, and, and so forth. And, and it's hugely important that this data is stored in, in, in a safe place. But also, um, not only is it stored in the same place, a safe place, but it's also accessible. Um, you know, we don't hold, unlike some of our um, competitors, um, we don't hold our clients to ransom in terms of their data. Their data belongs to them, and they can they should be able to access that that whenever they want. So, yeah, yes, of course, data is you know hugely important, and and the security of that data, you know, we we do take pride and uh, and, and do look after it for them. Mm -hmm. Now, when you play fortune teller time here, let's get the crystal ball out. So looking at, let's split into two things. Uh, where do you see this technology itself going in the future? And then technology within the company, the business, where do you see those going in the future? On the tech side, I mean, it's just constant. We touched upon this already. It's just constantly changing. We're watching, you know, news feeds of Elon Musk throwing more and more, you know, the, the satellites up there, et cetera. Have you got a, a kind of take on where you can see that evolving? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's starting to happen now, but, but to have buildings that, that almost become smart buildings, so they, they can almost understand, you know, if, if, if it's a, a let's say, a, a five-story building, and you've got more people on the fifth floor rather than the first floor, then, you know, buildings can almost become intelligent now in terms of, you know, understanding the heating requirements, you know, uh, the lighting requirements, because, of, you know, people's connectivity uh, to, to the, to the Wi-Fi, they can almost you know, almost track people, you know, around a building. Um, so yes, you know, you can affect, you know, heating and lighting. And, and it can even go down to the degree of the coffee machine that, you know, if you've got, you know, a lots of people on the fifth floor, the chances are the coffee machine will be will be used more than they would be on the first floor if there's not many people. So there are systems coming in now that, that are increasing. And I, this, will, this, will continue to, uh, this will continue to happen. So we're, you know, the smart buildings uh, are here, uh, are certainly here for the future.
Yeah, brilliant. And on the business side, so the company, what, plans, five year, 10 year, what have we got going? Yeah, no, this, I mean, at the, at the moment, we're focusing purely in the in the UK market. Um, right. And, you know, we're very proud of, of the quality that we're, we're doing. But, um, you know, whether, whether these are some trade secrets, I don't know. But, they, you know, there are, there are plans, you know, for us to look at providing our services outside the UK. Um, and there's no reason why, you know, we, why we can't do that. So that's, that's hugely exciting. Um, you know, of course, we've got some language barriers to deal with, but, um, but like you're in Scotland and I'm in Wales, you know, we can, <laughs> we can, uh, we can, we can work around those. Well, we're using Google Translate as we speak <laughs> <laughs> for the Celtic <laughs> connection. Oh, fantastic. Now, one of, the, one of the kind of areas, you yourself, you personally, you're quite an entrepreneur. You've got that kind of feel about you. Uh, I don't know if you've still got them at the moment, but you had these, I know through your, your profiles and stuff, you had that businesses with uh, boutique hotels and camper van businesses, all sorts of things. Has that been a, a business thing, an entrepreneur thing you've always had, or is it built up? Yeah, about 12 years ago, I bought a property in North Wales, and uh, it was pretty direct at the time. And... Um, it, it was one of those things that it's a 12 bedroom property. So we actually turned that business into a bed and breakfast. So, um, and we also now host weddings. So, um, you know, we can accommodate 20 guests, um, you know, up to 150 people at, at a wedding. Um, so it, it wasn't really, it was just one of those things that evolved. Um, and then, you know, we, we've got some land. So we then decided to, um, to open a small caravan and camping business. And, and now we now do glamping. So, you know, in the summer months, you know that that can be that can be quite busy. And then uh, two years ago, we bought another property that we've developed into a holiday home uh, again in North Wales. Brilliant. So um, yeah, this is it's um, it's it, the business is really a private business that my wife and my daughter they operate on a on a day by day basis. I, I just um, I, I I let them I, I let them get on with it. But um, the hospitality business has been really affected um, with COVID. So um, yeah. Uh, as as uh, you know, uh, as, as lots of people in the hospitality industry have, we had a, we had a fantastic August, uh, and then and then we've been closed since. So uh, it's but you know we're we're confident we're doing lots of renovations at the moment. So um, yeah, outside my um, my Monday to Friday technology within position, I, um, I I I I get involved in the hospitality world, which is uh, which is good fun. Love it, love it. A family empire. It's fantastic to see that, that, that entrepreneurial spirit. Absolutely brilliant. So for people listening in, watching in, and want to follow the links, and you know, they, they, maybe they've got their next project that's about to build up, or they're having a lot of problems just now with uh, you know, maybe managing some of the workspaces and they want to reach out to you. What, what's the process like for becoming a new client? Is, do you kind of guide them through a step-by-step -step plan? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so we, we would urge uh, you a developer or a new landlord to, to speak to as soon as possible you know we, we can you know talk to them about the, the requirements what their objectives are you know we can look at um advising them on where the comms room needs to be located you know where the wi-fi access points need to be so we can really advise from from that early you know early stages and um, so as early as possible you know please speak to us and, and um you know we can uh, we, we can certainly help Tremendous, that's fantastic. And if you are one of those people, make sure you jump into the show notes page when it's safe to do so and reach out to this gentleman and uh, get his team to help you. Fantastic. Richard, I could keep talking to you all day, but I want to be respectful of your time. So we'll leave the most important question to last. We, we spoke about pressure on the companies and tenants and big offices and stuff, but let's cut to the chase. How hard is it on you personally if the internet goes down at home? I mean, do, do all eyes turn to dads? What happens? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, as you say, we, we first of all, you turn things off and turn it on and see what happens. But uh, no, it, it's, um, it, it does happen and, and, it, and it's frustrating, but uh, it certainly makes you, um, it makes you appreciate, you know, good, good connectivity. You, you do, it's just an expected part of, uh, of life and, and that part of that utility. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's important. Excellent. Just keep some cards for customer service, phone numbers, hand them out to the kids, you'll be fine. Just take, take, them, take them away from you. <laughs> Tremendous stuff. Fantastic. Right, so for your time today, for, for explaining sort of a lot of the stuff that Technology Within do, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. No problem. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I did. Remember, with the guests that you just saw, go into the show notes for the page because all of the links are there so that you can get in touch and to get more information. And talking about getting more information, more guests, more insights, more knowledge, etc., make sure you're subscribed. 
get the subscription done, get the notifications on, and then we'll always keep in touch with you every single time a brand new show is going to come out. So thanks for tuning to This Week in Property.